So hi, I'm uh, Rajiv Mehta. Um, my focus has been on helping people take care of their own health, essentially on self-care. And one of the things is that, that all of our self quantification efforts could have a huge impact on people's ability to take care of themselves. But one of the things I've found is that the complexity of remembering uh, turns out to actually be a big barrier in getting people um, to be able to experiment well. One of the things we found from many uh, people in the QS movement who've done a great job of uh, running experiments is to keep things really simple. You know, whether it's been Robin's experiment with coffee or Seth's uh, butter mind experiment, the idea is to keep things simple. If you just have one variable, one thing that you're observing, it's a hell of a lot easier to actually carry out the experiment as well as to analyze the results. Uh, for some people, however, uh, simple is not exactly an option. Um, so this is a, a woman I know with uh, cystic fibrosis. She's uh, about 30, she has a son, um, she's married, and because of the complexity of her daily health, she's not able to hold down a job, but it doesn't mean she's you know, uh, unactive. She's actually very active in social causes. Um, one of the things you can see from this uh, particular regimen of hers is that every day she's got about 13 different meds that she has to take. Uh, and these range from pills, uh, to a drink, to inhalers, to nebulized medications. Um, and in this diagram, the green dots represent things that sort of take a moment to do, like taking a pill. Whereas the, the blue spots are things that require a concentrated amount of time. Sometimes half an hour, sometimes 45 minutes, and so forth. And the bars in yellow are things that happen well when they happen. But altogether, she's got 13 different meds, seven other things that are really important for daily health. And these things happen at 18 different times during the day. So as you can imagine, she has difficulty remembering everything. She has a hard time actually keeping track of what she has and has not done. So it's hard to be consistent. And this difficulty in being consistent also means it's hard to experiment. It's hard to carry out your experiment. It's hard to make sense of the data, given that the data may be very noisy. So one of the things I've been working on with a friend of mine, Alexi, who's back there, is a tool, an app, everything's an app these days, um, to help people with this. The, the point of Tonic is to help people remember and keep track of anything in their health regimen. The goal is to help them carry out their personal health practice, whatever that may be. And so by design, the app uh, is essentially customized by the user for whatever it is that they're doing. And one of the hopes for that we have for Tonic is that by helping people do a better job of sort of adhering to their own self-defined regimen, is that it will make it easier for them to do self-quantification, to do self-experimentation, and to learn. And what I'm going to share with you is some quick stories of four people that have been using this in a beta way, um, that you know about how they're finding this. But I'm going to start off with someone who's actually kind of simple. Um, Stephen is very much involved, involved in the quantified self community, um, and he's been self-tracking for a very long time. I had reached out to him um, mainly to get some feedback on the interaction design and the UI design and so forth. He doesn't have a complex condition, so I don't think he's actually a target user. And he's also one of the most organized and disciplined people that I know, so not someone who I would think would have a need for the kind of tool that Tonic is. Uh, however, he's been trying to follow one of the regimens in Tim Ferriss' book, of The 4-Hour Body. It's uh, something that has to do with, it uses four nutritional supplements uh, to impact a weight loss, uh, I mean fat loss, and it's, um, these four different meds are taken at four different times a day, basically before breakfast, before lunch, before dinner, before bed. Uh, seemingly really trivial, especially for someone like Stephen, but what he was finding was that about 20% of the time, he was actually forgetting, which made it hard to sense how well is the regimen working. After he started using tonic, he was actually able to, well, he's never missed a med since then. And so the point here is that even these seemingly trivial uh, things turn out to be non-trivial from a remembering perspective. Um, Sarah is very different. She has a rather complex situation. She's got Parkinson's. Um, just to get rid of stereotypes, Sarah is someone who's 40. She's a very successful engineer. She runs her own engineering consulting firm while at the same time, I don't know how, also studying health at a major, at a major university. 
Um, for her daily regimen, she's got six meds that she takes in different combinations at six different times a day. And for her, it's absolutely critical that she not screw up. Uh, the impact of messing up is quite immediate. Uh, it really ruins your day. So she actually lived a very disciplined regimented life. And it wasn't until she started using tonic did she realize how much of a mental burden all of that remembering was on a daily level. And she's found that almost instantly she became reliant on tonic reminders. And she commented to me how she's noticed that she no longer checks her watch all the time. And this freedom, this discovery that she has now more mental energy has started her to think about what can she learn about her health. And one of the things she's focused on right now is trying to figure out these things that are important to her, how can she come up with ways to quantify that so that she can conduct some experiments. Um, Julie is someone who has cystic fibrosis like that diagram I showed you earlier. Again, Julie is, uh, in this case, about 50. She's a retired uh, doctor, uh, very active in running her own sort of wellness consulting firm. Um, and she has a very complex regimen, at least as complex as the one you saw before. And in fact, that there have been times when life gets even more difficult. Um, so she actually is, again, a very organized person. And she's tried many different ways to try to remember all of this stuff. Um, and on the whole, what she's found right now is the most valuable is kind of daily morning ritual of arranging her meds and other things for the day. She also has two really important visual cues. Um, she has a pillbox. Well, we've all seen pillboxes, but those are way um, small for her needs. And in fact, they're also not appropriate because she has inhalers and nebulized stuff. So she actually has a tackle box. If you've ever seen a fisherman with their tackle box, it's big. That's what she has her meds in. She also has a cart um, about gay high that has three shelves. She calls it her lung cart because it has a lot of her equipment on it. And basically, she rolls it around the house with her so she can always see what, it, what it's about. Um, she was also surprised to find how quickly she relied on it, although she had only expected it to be useful in checking off what had she done. Um, one of the things that is really key here is that what she was trying to do is what I refer to as a short-term tracking or near-term tracking. It's answering the question, oh, did I remember to do, rather than the kind of discussion we usually have in the quantified self about tracking, which is a longer-term thing about um, what can I learn from the data. Um, but similarly, like with Sarah, having found that she's got this new mental energy, um, and a little tangent on that, Recently, she discovered how quickly she had gotten accustomed to the reminders because she misplaced her iPad and had to live without it for a few days. And so it was back to remembering the way things was before. And she found it very, very hard. And so she's also looking into the kinds of things she can learn. Um, the last uh, person I want to briefly mention to you is uh, Father Andreas, who has a daughter with cystic fibrosis. Um, in his case, the complexity comes from the fact that there's five regular caregivers. And one of the key things is that he is now looking to learn different things. A couple of them are the kinds of things that we've talked about in our experiments over here, about what's the impact of this on that. But the other one that's interesting is he's also looking into what is the impact of simply doing it, sort of the, the meta QS that, that Joe and Lisa were talking about. He's going to give his daughter an iPod Touch to use the app to record her stomach pains. And he's mainly interested in seeing just the simple act of engagement. How will that impact her sense of well-being? So the message I want to leave everybody with is that in most of our quantified self-discussions, when we talk about these experiments, we tend to focus a lot on what should we experiment, what's the experiment design, and also on what have we learned? How do we analyze the data? I want us to perhaps put a little bit more energy into what can we do to make it easier for people to do the experiments. As it turns out, doing the doing is a lot harder than it seems. So, time for a couple questions, and uh, while we're doing that, yeah, let's see up there. So, let's see, right there, question. Actually, um, the, the app in that sense is designed to be um, quite, quite, uh, it's quite trivial. So, no, we didn't actually give them any instructions. They just, uh, they're able to customize it themselves. 
it's by design, it's very simple. At the moment, the app is just an app. All of their data is, is simply in there. Um, we are focusing on that because, from in a sense, the kernel is if you can't do the experiment, the rest of the stuff doesn't matter. So our focus has been on how do we make the doing easier. But once it's there, absolutely, then it becomes a really rich mine for those sorts of things. Um, philosophically, the data is the best. Uh, the question is, why did we call it tonic as opposed to chronic? Um, I, I, the, the naming of products, uh, I've been through it a million times, is one of the dark arts. You try lots of things and who knows where you end up with. In the end, we found that people actually like the name, so we're uh, very pleased because we went through a hell of a lot of stress in between. And we tried to crowdsource the name. I asked a zillion of our friends who a whole bunch of names, what do you like? Uh, we got an incredible scattershot answer. So um, there's something crowdsourcing doesn't work for. Thank you again. Sure.